Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and today we are talking about Palantir Technologies PLTR stock. We will be discussing why a Palantir director sold almost $1 million worth of PLTR stock recently, what the newest analyst price targets are for Palantir stock, and how Palantir Technologies will spend their $2.3 billion on their balance sheet. We will also address the newest Palantir stock news, what new startup companies Palantir is investing into, and then lastly, we will briefly go over three electric vehicle stocks that should be on your radar. Go and press the like button right now for more PLTR stock news updates. Comment down below your personal PLTR stock price target. Turn on all subscription notifications to stay informed and now let's get right into today's stories. First let's talk about Palantir's cash reserves and what their cash burn rate is. Last year Palantir's cash burn rate was around 62 million dollars per year and because Palantir has 2.3 billion dollars worth of cash on their balance sheet this would mean that Palantir can fund their operations from their cash pile for at least three years. However, as time goes on, Palantir will become more profitable and their expenses will decrease, so it's probably even longer than three years. Investors are very excited for the growth potential of this company, but the company's market cap is rather high because it sits at around $46 billion, so Palantir will need to grow into this market cap by increasing their revenues and their cash flows so that they can hold and justify that valuation. Luckily, analysts say that Palantir's estimated annual growth rate is 26.4%, but that number is anticipated to climb above 30% for the next few years. The way that Palantir can use this growth rate and their cash on their balance sheet to their advantage is to reinvest this money and growth back into the company so they can grow even more, and that is exactly what Palantir is doing. If you didn't already know, Palantir announced multiple new companies for their Foundry for Builders initiative, which provides their amazing commercial software to startup companies on a subscription basis. These new companies are anticipated to be hyper-growth companies that specialize in health and blockchain technology, just to name a few industries. These companies will benefit greatly from Palantir's Foundry platform because it will allow them to make smarter and faster decisions based off of their own data. One of the new companies that I'm excited about is Elementus, which is a New York-based blockchain analytics platform. But besides blockchain technologies, we also have other companies that specialize in drug development and clinical care. Next on the list, we have a digital media company that's based in Switzerland that's dedicated to streaming cricket. Next up, we have FoodSmart, which is a San Francisco-based digital nutrition and healthy food buying marketplace, which is pretty cool. Coming in at number five, we have a Houston-based company that's dedicated to improving construction through integrating and automating supply chain data. The next company is really cool as well because it's a startup that is focused on enabling consumers to take control of their own data and how it's transacted in the digital marketplace. And lastly, we have another San Francisco-based technology company that operates a platform for optimizing wind farm performance. The CTO of Catalyst DI, which automates supply chain data, had this to say, and I quote, the Palantir Foundry platform provides us the ability to aggregate and continuously analyze thousands of previously disconnected datasets, giving us an unprecedented understanding of the construction supply chain. With these powerful tools, our team is focusing on turning integrated data into actionable intelligence for our industry. End quote. The CEO of the European Cricket Network also had this to say about Palantir, and I quote, We are excited to access technology previously reserved for the most established and leading organizations. We can use Palantir Foundry to ask the right questions of the data with the best interface and integration tools combined all in one place. End quote. After these comments, the COO of Palantir responded by saying this, and I quote, we are excited to expand the use of Palantir Foundry to yet another group of hyper-growth startups. These organizations have ambitious goals and timelines. They see building on Foundry as infrastructure as the cheapest and fastest way to market. End quote. So this is not only great news for Palantir because they get that subscription-based service revenue from these startups, they also have the opportunity to invest into these startups which are hyper-growth companies. More good news is that Palantir now has solidified itself above the average analyst price target of $23.50, which does not mean that the stock can't fall back below this point, but instead, if this position is held until year's end, it will force analysts to either upgrade their price target or downgrade their price target.
The main problem concerning Palantir among analysts is that they just don't agree with each other when it comes to Palantir. One analyst says that the stock price should be $15, while another analyst says that the PLTR stock price should reach at least $31. Because of these discrepancies among experts, this is why I personally use the average price target and the average price predictions so I don't rely on one analyst. However, I think Morningstar has really hit the nail on the head here by saying that the Palantir stock has a minimum fair value price of $28 per share, which is really hard to disagree with. Ultimately, we will have to wait to see if analysts decide to upgrade or downgrade the stock for their next 12-month price predictions. So I want you to comment down below what you think the PLTR stock price will be at the end of this year. In other news, Alexander Moore, who is a director at Palantir Technologies, sold off some shares recently according to a Form 4 filing from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The director sold about 34,000 shares at a price of $24.11, which granted him around $820,000, but this is nothing to worry about because he still owns over 2 million PLTR shares that right now are worth over $50 million. I see that investors are scared of insider selling like this, but this this particular sell-off is nothing to worry about. For Palantir stock news, we see PLTR shares outperforming all three major indexes, such as the Dow Jones, which has recovered some from a 450-point fall, and they have jumped up back around 100 points. We also saw a good recovery from the S&P 500, as well as the tech-heavy Nasdaq, and this rallying is due to a temporary debt ceiling extension. Now let's talk about three electric vehicle stocks and I will throw in a bonus stock at the end because I always like to reward the people that watch my videos all the way through until the end. First up we have Lucid Group, ticker symbol LCID, which has gained major popularity through social media and it's very popular on the subreddit Wall Street Bets. Lucid is aiming for the higher end electric vehicle community for now, which will gain them market share because not many electric vehicle makers are offering cars worth over $120,000. Most investors are trying to find the next Tesla stock, or at least a company that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tesla in the electric vehicle industry, because clearly Tesla is the market leader. However, competition in this market is fierce because many startup EV companies, along with legacy automakers, are trying to breach this extremely lucrative market, which is projected to have an annualized growth rate of 33.6% until 2027, which is absolutely insane. The CEO of Lucid was actually one of the lead engineers for Tesla when they were developing the Model S. So there is some great minds behind this company. However, we will see how they compete in the market once they can deliver vehicles because right now they have not delivered vehicles yet, which means no revenues. Currently, Lucid has a market cap of $39 billion, which is astonishing for a pre-revenue company. So why would we consider investing into Lucid? Well, the two main reasons to put the stock on a watch list would be due to their technology and their funding. Lucid CEO and and his team have very rich technical experience in the electric vehicle industry, which will allow them to avoid common pitfalls that many other EV companies will likely experience. Regarding Lucid's technology, according to the EPA, one of Lucid's vehicles can travel up to 520 miles on a single charge, which ranks it number one in terms of range for an electric vehicle. And that statistic includes all models by Tesla and all Tesla vehicles in general. Lucid also has loads of cash on their balance sheet, which is worth $4.4 billion, and that is enough money to fund the company throughout 2022. The production of the Lucid Air has already begun and they are anticipating to have deliveries to customers by the end of October, so the company can start generating some revenue. Next up, we have NEO stock, stock ticker symbol NIO. NEO shares have been doing very well lately because an analyst from Goldman Sachs upgraded NEO stock from a neutral rating to a buy rating rating, and they have also increased their price target for the stock to $56 per share. This stock upgrade represents a 65% growth potential from where the stock currently trades at, which is great news. NEO, like Lucid, targets a higher end of customer by jointly manufacturing and selling comfortable, smart, premium electric vehicles with a next-generation technology for their autonomous driving and artificial intelligence. NEO stock is mainly referred to as the test 
Tesla of China, and it has become a huge staple in many U.S. investor portfolios, including my own, because of its incredible success last year when the stock rose by over 1,000%. Currently, the stock has been volatile and it's trading at around $34 per share, but in my opinion, NIO has plenty of upside left in its tank, especially as their electric vehicle delivery numbers continue to increase year over year and quarter over quarter. For example, NIO delivered 21,896 electric vehicles in the second quarter of 2021, which is over a 100% increase since last year's numbers. Next up, we have Ford stock, ticker symbol F. Now, Ford is a legacy car maker, and they are not a pure EV play. However, they are said to be very successful thanks to their fully electric pickup truck named the F-150 Lightning. Not to mention, they also have the Mustang Mach-E, which is a super ugly car. It's a five-door electric compact SUV, which won the 2021 North American SUV Award of the Year. We also see other automakers like GM and Chrysler investing heavily into electric vehicle technology just to keep up with the competition from other legacy makers as well as new electric vehicle startups. Last but not least, we have our bonus stock, which is Blink Charging, which is not an electric vehicle maker, but instead owns many electric vehicle charging stations that EVs can use to recharge. Another stock that I really like, which is similar, is ChargePoint, but I will stick to just telling you about Blink for this video, and I will do another video maybe in the future about ChargePoint. Blink Charging has over 19,000 charging stations and over 190,000 members, and this has translated nicely into their revenues, which have risen 129% from last year, all the way to $6.6 .6 million. As the EV market further develops, charging stations are going to be a must, thus increasing the value of charging station stocks like Blink Charging. But I want to hear what your favorite EV stock is, whether it's an automaker or if it's a charging station stock, it doesn't matter. I want to hear your thoughts. Comment down below, like this video right now, subscribe for more video content like this one, and I will see you in the next YT video.